Hi, welcome to the next um, lesson in our course on Quick Everything CFD Toolbox. Today, as promised, we will show you how to solve a heat, tran a heat transfer problem, namely um, heat convection problem. Let's imagine that we deal with a heat exchanger which is composed of several hot pipes um, which are organized in a certain uh, spatial pattern. Uh, what we wish, what we usually do when simulating uh, this kind of geometries like a heat exchanger, we do not simulate the whole exchanger, but we simply want to cut off a representative geometry, um, which is uh, simply repeated in all the directions. And by doing this, we can simulate just an, a, a small, a small cut, a small piece of the uh, whole geometry and by doing this make the whole simulation more accurate and much quicker. Um, so the first step is to extract representative geometry then create geometry and mesh and the third <coughs> sorry in the third uh, point is to write a MATLAB script. <coughs> we will be dealing with the geometry uh, where the pipes have got diameter of uh, two millimeters uh, they are spaced, uh, the spacing between these pipes is 2 millimeters as well uh, and the inflow velocity the inflow velocity will be 5 centimeters per second so all the data is given here and the fluid properties are given here um, so we basically deal with water uh, of kinematic viscosity 10 to the power of minus 6 meters square per second uh, thermal conductivity given here, density and thermal capacity and thermal capacity. We we assume that we have a cold fluid um, at the inlet at, and hot pipes. We represent these temperatures as 20 degrees and 50 degrees. What um, a very common mm, what a very common um, what is very common in, in such simulations is you could actually uh, in a usual way um, define these temperatures in Kelvin this is actually the correct, the proper way how you should do this but um, based on the fact that the um, Kelvin scale and the Celsius scales um, are actually the same they are only shifted by 273 degrees, uh, you can also uh, define these temperatures uh, to, to represent the Celsius temperatures and the simulation will also be fine. So what we do is we create a geometry, a representative geometry in Gmesh. If you want to create this geometry by yourself you can try to do it. Um, if you take the geometry and the measure that we have prepared um, then you will end up with physical line IDs 22 at the inlet, 26 and 27 at the hot pipes. Uh, please notice that here uh, we, will we will have slip boundary condition, we will have symmetry because we have um, because the original geometry extends further down to the, um, to the bottom and further to the top. Uh, the outflow that will need uh, that will not need to be specified uh, is denoted by a physical line 23 and all the other um, numbers and IDs you could potentially need are also listed here for you. Um, let me now go to the um, uh, to MATLAB and first. I will simply run the script that we have already prepared uh, to simulate a heat, con a heat convection problem. So a coupled fluid flow and heat transfer problem. Uh, first we convert the flow and well actually the temperature field is then uh, computed almost instantly. Uh, so you see that the residuals of the fluid flow problem have dropped. Um, we cut the um, we get the solution to the velocity field here in this plot uh, and the temperature field here. Uh, what you can see we've got well 20 degrees cold inflow 
um, the, the chord flute at the inflow and, and then it, it simply um, gains temperature the temperature increases downstream with the flow but you can see that the that water is a uh, fluid with pretty poor thermal, cap uh, thermal um, diffusivity so you can still see that there are big temperature differences at the outer um, just to all right and you can also see see the measure that we have prepared for you uh, in this example we deal with with a simple laminar flow uh, well um, to to just see what happens if we increase the thermal conductivity of the material so by increasing the thermal conductivity we also increase um, implicitly thermal diffusivity uh, let me just for a moment increase the thermal conductivity to a completely artificial value which will be one order magnitude greater and then converge the flow um, and the temperature field once again. In this situation you will see that the temperature field at the outlet is uh, the temperature distribution is, is much more diffuse. Uh, this is um, this is the result that we could have foreseen and we have expected that. Alright, let me now come back to the original thermal conductivity and let me explain what happens in the whole script so that you are able to simulate heat transfer pro problems alone. Um, what we do first, we simply clear everything what we had previously we import the mesh which is given for you heat exchanger msh is the grid that we have created for you for this example we display the mesh we convert mesh to the second order you know all these steps already um, here we define fluid properties well in this example we will need not only kinematic viscosity but we need to have um, thermal properties of the fluid, so thermal conductivity, fluid density and heat capacity and what you have to remember is in heat transfer simulation, in heat convection um, you have to specify resulting thermal diffusivity of the material uh, not only thermal conductivity, so we compute this uh, K coefficient as lambda thermal conductivity divided by density and divided by heat capacity um, all right, again, usual things uh, that you have seen previously, please uh, pay your attention that we um, that, there are, that, there are, that the residuals that we compute in our fluid flow simulation are um, not scaled residuals. These are uh, absolute residuals. So because we have a very small dimensions of the domain. Uh, as you will see this, uh, our geometry, our pipes are only two millimeters, um, so these are really small, uh, small dimensions. Uh, because of that, the absolute residuals in a very small domain will also be very small, so we simply decrease maximum residuals from the value that we had previously in our examples, we usually 10 to the power of minus 3 or 4, we, we decrease it to 10 to the power of minus 9 which is much lower uh, we leave maximum number of iterations at the same value we define the velocity and the inlet boundary and again we go to the iteration loop to iterate non-linearity in the Navier-Stokes equation uh, basically there is nothing new here uh, you, you've seen that in our previous lessons. Uh, what you all right? So we assemble Navier-Stokes matrix. We impose boundary condition. Uh, physical line 22 should be inlet with velocity that we have previously specified. Um, the wall boundary conditions are at all walls, uh, so you can compare it. You can compare it uh, with this. So this that, 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 and both pipes are walls. 
Uh, and uh, one new thing is, as I mentioned, we have a connection to the other part of the domain to the, uh, in the top direction and the bottom direction, so we don't have walls here, we have a symmetry boundary condition which is denoted in quick over CMCFD toolbox as slip along X. Then we compute residuals, plot the residuals, check the convergence criteria, uh, and then solve the equations. We, um, by once we have solved the fluid flow problem, we display velocity field, actually only the axis velocity component, and then uh, what you should be aware is that uh, if we do not include any buoyancy terms, um, then the heat transfer problem is not what well, is the solution of the heat transfer problem does not influence the flow field so it is only one way coupled um, what I mean is you can first solve the fluid flow problem and then after solution of the fluid flow problem then solve the heat transfer problem um, because the heat transfer problem will not influence the flow field um, unless you want to include buoyancy terms or if you want to, um, to assume that the different temperatures will influence the viscosities of the fluid. But so far the um, temperature changes are small you can assume that the viscosity is constant and in this way uh, you don't need to repeat the simulation of the fluid flow problem. Alright, so we we get to the heat transfer problem. Um, the heat transfer problem is a um, convection diffusion problem. So we assemble diffusion matrix uh, and I, um, I want to point to this uh, diffusivity, as mentioned earlier, this should be thermo uh, thermodiffusivity, not thermoconductivity. Um, and as I said, because we deal with heat convection, which is uh, described by convection diffusion equation, we have to uh, add to our diffusion matrix, we need to add scalar convection matrix. Uh, we do not want to stabilize that. If you would like to stabilize, you would need to stabilize the solution uh, in case of, for example, very, very small diffusivities compared to velocities. Then you should change this flag to SUPG doubly asymptotic. Uh, all right, temperature at the inlets, temperature at the pipes. Uh, impose scalar boundary condition, so we specify value at the inlet, 22 is inlet, at all the other walls we want to specify temperature of the pipes, we solve the equations, we get the temperature field by um, by solving the, the system of equations with our uh, convection diffusion matrix and right hand side vector uh, and we plot the temperature field. So let me run this script again Well, and simply have fun with all the other um, simulations, heat transfer simulations that you can do on your own. Um, well, so good luck with your simulations and we will have one more lesson where I will show you how you can couple a fluid flow uh, simulation with heat transfer with a very simple control algorithm that you write in MATLAB on your own uh, because we think that the biggest um, flexibility of this toolbox is that you get a, a fluid flow and heat transfer solvers which are available for you in MATLAB and the whole flexibility of this tool comes from the fact that you want to include um, that you want to simulate your pro problems and you need to write tiny parts of the scripts on your own uh, to, to solve the simply user-dependent problems. So please wait um, to the next lesson which will come in the next week and 
just have fun thank you see you bye